There appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. Crippled and bent over, are we in mind, body, or spirit? Jesus comes to us with good news. We are set free, restored, beloved. Rejoice, O church! Rejoice in Christ. Worship with awe and wonder. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism, clothed with Christ and God's mercy and forgiveness. We give thanks for the gift of baptism. We praise you, O God, for water. We need water to drink, to quench our thirst. We need water to wash, to clean our bodies and clothes. We need water to grow, to nourish ourselves. We praise you, O God, for your spirit given at baptism. We have life through you, streaming from the font of grace. Excellent. The reading today is from Luke, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to read from the Common English Bible. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath day. A woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over. She couldn't stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, you are set free. He placed his hands on her and she straightened up at once and she praised God. Tambourine. The synagogue leader, incensed that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, that was verboten, responded, there are six days during which this work, healing, is permitted. Come and be healed on those days, but not on the Sabbath. The Lord replied, hypocrites, hypocrites. Don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or your donkey from its stall and lead it out to get a drink of water? Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound by sickness and Satan for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage on Sabbath? When he said these things, all of his opponents were put to shame. But all of those in the crowds rejoiced, praised God, for all the extraordinary things that Jesus was doing. <coughs> this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Normally, I preach from the floor. You all know that. But I know some people have been having a harder time understanding with a mask on, so I'm going to stay here and preach today but I'm going to remove my mask. Are we okay with this? Okay. I'll have it on the other, the, throughout the rest of the worship. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Just then, she showed up. While worship was going on in progress, in mid-sermon, with worshipers watching and the synagogue leaders tending the liturgy just then she showed up broken back bent over downward facing 
She showed up in a world when disabled bodies were considered disabled as the result of sin or a parent's sin. But just then she showed up because she believed that keeping the Sabbath day, as we heard in Isaiah, that holy day to honor and praise God mattered most, even though her back hurt and her spirit suffered. Just then, the preacher stopped mid-sermon. I don't think I've ever stopped mid-sermon for anything. <laughs> Even a tickle in my throat last week. Just then, the preacher stopped mid-sermon, stopped the liturgy, stopped the synagogue schedule because Jesus saw that her liberation was 18 years overdue. Liberation from disfiguration, liberation from judgment, liberation from Sabbath law. Nothing, you know, that's a big deal. Liberation from liturgy, because that preacher, Jesus, didn't preach with only words, but with performative words that had actions in them. Jesus preached the word and he, teach, and he touched her, and she was liberated, received life, and she was loved by God. Because, if not then, when? Exactly. <laughs> I love that when that happens. When Jesus speaks yesterday, today, or tomorrow, people are liberated from disfigurement of every kind. Sin, failure, addiction, uncertainty or doubt, sickness, death, despair. And like the bent-over woman who was liberated, God is praised because God is unquestionably bigger than whatever or whoever has us bound. I mean, amen to that, or why are we here? It doesn't take much imagination, dear church, for us to fully believe that there should be way more liberated people in our lives and in our world and more manifestations of God's glory in our communities. Because if we believe that Jesus' words is a life-altering, love-altering, just life-giving word, then our words, our actions, our walk, our talk, our decisions, our votes, Everything will model what Jesus did for that woman in that synagogue during worship that day. Jesus saw beyond her appearance. Jesus saw her in a world really when only him mattered or him mattered more. That was their world. He didn't blame her for her condition. He didn't believe it was the result of sin. He didn't tell her with her own power to pull herself up from her bootstraps or to straighten herself up. He didn't tell her to come back on Tuesday or the other six days of the week to be healed. She hadn't done anything wrong. And her infirmity could only be remedied by liberation. We have a God of liberation. Woman, he said to her, you are set free. Free, a daughter of Abraham, our sister in Christ, a daughter of God. If not then, when? When, dear church? I listened to an incredible sermon. Um, it was a sermon series, a preaching um, gathering. It was back in 2017 at Luther Seminary. Dr. Reverend Raquel Letzem preached, and I'm just going to summarize because she said it more eloquently than what I could, and she needs all credit. She said, at some point, our faith, our trust, our conviction that Jesus matters more than anything, 
more than any problem, any infirmity, any cause, ought to be strong enough to spur us to see beyond ourselves and to see and speak up for somebody else, not because it is our moral obligation, not because we feel ashamed, not because we should, not because other people would be pleased with us, but because God's Spirit is also inside of us and rises up more powerfully than everything else around us. And therefore, we speak unapologetically, unashamedly, unabashedly, a word that shows love and enlivens and liberates somebody else because Christians are on the side of life. Amen? Amen. If not now, when? God is always on the side of life so that all people make a living wage, so that all people have access to affordable what? Health, thank you, health care of every kind so that all people receive justice, so that all children drink lead-free water. Amen? Amen? So that all people receive quality education at an affordable price, and that teachers, too, do not have to give of their own salaries, so that gun laws are reformed, so that people may attend churches and other you know, venues, concerts, parks, streets, grocery shopping without fear of being gunned down. Jesus speaks a word and all people live and are liberated and know God's word. Is this not Jesus' mission? If not now, when? More than ever. More than ever. At a time when our denominations of every denomination in this country and throughout our world are in steep decline, it's, I'm not saying anything that you don't know, but people are watching us, Christians. And it's critical for us to pay attention to how we show God's love, God's love for life. God's love and expectation is even dictated through Sabbath law and through the words of Isaiah that, Melissa, that you were reading to us that shows that liberation is for all, especially the oppressed, the marginalized, the discriminated against. Jesus touched the bent-over woman, changed her life, and what did she do? She got that tambourine. She praised God, but her celebration was interrupted. And here's where the tension is back in Jesus' day and our day as well. The leader of the synagogue, the pastor, the bishop, the whomever, became incensed, angry. The woman was not healed on the right day. And I love a good schedule. Who doesn't? right? And sometimes our schedules restrict us. Sometimes in her day, Sabbath law restricted her healing. The liturgy was interrupted. The preacher was interrupted. The schedule was challenged. And he, that, that Pharisee leader of the synagogue, those members of his, they grew, they had grown comfortable with impotent words and dull ritual. But not Jesus, not that day, not that day. Jesus continues to challenge us as he did the religious leaders of his time, challenges institutions, all of our denominal, denominational institutions, pastors, bishops, members, worshipers, leaders, volunteers. Jesus challenges by saying this to the leaders, to the church. You would loose your donkey or your ox on the Sabbath day, but not this woman. If not now, when? You would disregard people, especially those who are sick and in need. If not now, when? 
When? All we have is today. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is never certain. But today belongs to the Lord. And there's no delaying because at some day, some time, we and everybody needs someone, somebody needs help. We need liberating. We need to live fully and need to be loved. Everybody. If not now, when, dear church? Our message is relevant, and I think this is where we really need to claim our message that is the Lord's word. God sees everyone, and everybody matters, and that you and everybody is loved, and God is with and for you, and everybody out there. It's a simple message. It's the message that Jesus gave to that woman and liberated her with. And God sends us with the word, Jesus Christ, out every day. God is sending the word to us every day, and like that bent-over woman, with everything set against her, we have to show up more than ever, dear church. We have to show up for this congregation, for worship and ministry that happens here and is connected elsewhere, with our neighbors, with our community, with people passing by, with our mission partners. For our families show up and our jobs and for God show up because God shows up for us and we trust that nothing will ever stop God from showing up because you might wonder well how do you know that right because nothing stopped Jesus nothing not unwed parents not an inn that was booked full and a whole town had no room for them. Demons and devils didn't stop him. Fumbling disciples. Nothing stopped him. Not a few loaves of fish, not enough to feed 5,000 people for sure. Not a storm at sea. Not an angry mob who tried to shove him off a cliff. Nor betraying Jesus or Judas nor betraying Peter, not a sham of a trial, not a beating, not even death, not a cross, not an empty tomb that was sealed. Nothing stopped Jesus from showing up and promising resurrection life and God's love for all. So we get to show up for God and each other. No matter the day, no matter how hard, no matter who has told us, impossible, can't do it, there's a schedule to be kept, I'm busy, I have to be over here. No matter the day, because God shows up, God can, God will, and we do too, nothing stops the Lord. Amen. 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 So we show up. Thanks be to God.